On today's video, I am doing the unthinkable. Now you might be thinking that I'm crazy, but hear me out for just a little bit. You already know that steaks are fantastic, but did you know that the number one thing to go along with steak is fries? That is correct. Steak and potato is a perfect combination, and whenever you have steak, most likely you had it with some fries. So that got me thinking, since this combination is so good, why not age a steak inside of a potato, but not stopping it there? Let's bury the whole thing and see what happens. Well, you're about to find out right now, because to start off with this experiment, the first thing I need is some steaks. These are choice grade, they're one and a half inches thick and perfect for this. Now the first thing I did was to look for some potatoes and unfortunately these are the largest one I could find. They're Idaho potatoes and great for french fries. But as you can clearly see, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to fit a steak inside. But then I came across this. Let's just call it a big potato. Here in Miami we call it Malanga but there are different names depending on where you're from. However, I believe it's gonna be perfect for this experiment. Now the idea is this. As I'm cutting the potato and prepping it, I'm challenging you to think about one thing. Just like kimchi, I believe that this steak inside of this potato will get fermented. That could be a good thing. A lot of foods that are fermented are fantastic. I'm pretty sure you can think of several different ones. So even though this experiment might sound insane, there's some truth behind it. As once this big potato was fully carved, I was shocked on how slimy it is. As the next thing to do was to go ahead and place my steak in there. And at this stage, you can clearly see that I really need a big potato. So I needed to do some more carving. And eventually, once I got that out, my steak was able to fit. Don't forget that I had to do the same exact thing for the other side as well, as now the steak will be perfectly fitted in there. At first, to close this up and hold it together, I thought some toothpicks would do the job, but the last thing I wanted was for some dirt to get inside of my steak. So even though I closed it up with toothpick, I went ahead and got some butcher's twine and tied it up real good as well, because now that this is ready, outside we go to bury it. The first thing to do is to dig a nice hole, but I didn't want it to be too deep as I needed the heat on the surface so that it can ferment. But as I was doing so, I got worried about creepy critters. They might just eat it. So if I leave this thing here for a month, I will come back to nothing. That's the last thing I want. So I decided to take it out after an hour instead of a month. But we're not done yet. I tried to clean it up as much as possible, and even though it was fermenting under the ground for an hour, the USDA says you don't want to leave it under the danger zone for over two hours. So I'm still under their guidelines, but I had to get the temperature as low as possible once again. So for that, I went ahead and threw it in my dry ager and let it stay in there for an entire week. As then, I had a different idea. I also wanted to use a regular potato to see what happens. As you know, potatoes oxidize. So here's what I came up with. I'm gonna go ahead and shred the whole thing, then completely cover my steak with it. The more, the better. I really wanna encase this nicely. That way, we will see what the oxidation will do to the steak. Because once I was done, and inside of the dry ager, it goes for an entire week. Now that the time was up, take a look. This is the shredded potato one. Obviously, the potato got completely oxidized. That is expected. And as I kept removing everything little by little, there was only one thing in my mind. If it smells bad, throw it away. That's your first sign of telling you something went wrong. But with this one, it didn't. As the first thing I noticed is that the steak is much more tender. But not only that, the fat was not slimy. It was extremely dry and obviously completely oxidized. And we had several different spots throughout the steak, including some red ones which was kind of weird. However, it never smelled bad. That gave me the confidence to continue on, as this was not the one that was buried. Here we have the next steak. First thing to do was to remove the butcher's twine. Once that was done, I thought that it was gonna open immediately. As you can clearly see, that is not the case. It did the complete opposite. It almost acted like a vacuum sealed. The thing was completely vacuumed in there. And as I opened the things little by little, the biggest surprise of my life was this. Take a look at the preservation of the steak. It absolutely blew my mind. But there were other things that was a little bit concerning. And that would be the sliminess. It is quite slimy. So I went ahead, transfer it to a cutting board. Now take a look at this one. There's still some pieces of the big potato in there. And even though it's still a little bit slimy, there's almost nothing wrong with this steak at all. And of course, that gave me really high hopes to see what's gonna happen. As now that I got this steak ready, I went ahead and got a control one as well. That way we'll have a full comparison to see what's gonna happen. For the seasoning, I kept it real simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. As once that was done, my steaks are now ready for the grill.
But just in case things go south and this does not turn out well, I decided to go ahead and make an awesome side dish. This one, I can guarantee you will please everyone. First thing to do is to grab some meat. I went with this beautiful picanha. Then I did something that most Brazilians will not approve. And that would be to slice it nice and thin. And yep, I'll be saving the fat for later on. Because once I got nice thin strips, I went ahead and placed some plastic film on top. Then immediately got my meat mallet. Made it as flat as possible while also tenderizing it. Then I seasoned it with salt and a good amount of pepper. Placed a generous amount of prosciutto right on top. Tenderized it a little bit more. Cut the whole thing in half as it was now ready for the filling. And to make it, it is quite simple to do. Into a bowl, I combined some breadcrumbs, followed by provolone cheese, parmigiano reggiano, oregano, some parsley, and olive oil. Mix everything well and combine these ingredients. And of course, one important ingredient I forgot, and that would be some fresh garlic. As now, the only thing left to do is to fill the steaks with it. Don't add too much, because here's the idea. As the steak is cooking, all of the juices will get trapped by the breadcrumbs, making it taste phenomenal. And to close it up, you just gotta use some tooth Picks. To cook it, it's quite simple. Into a skillet, I threw in some oil and immediately started getting some color. You want to get a nice golden brown color and avoid it from burning. And the most important thing once you're done is the fawn that is left behind. As next, I went ahead and added some shallots and to deglaze the pan, some wine. Mix that up real good and make sure you prevent anything from burning. Then you want to add some bay leaves, followed by some salt, oregano, thyme, and beef stock. Mix it really good and make sure that the pan is fully deglazed. As next, you want to add some tomato sauce, mix it a little bit more, and immediately throw in all of your rolled up steaks. As it's cooking, baste it little by little. Two things are going to happen. You're going to be infusing a tremendous amount of flavor into the steaks. And most importantly, that sauce is going to be on a whole nother level. Cover it up until everything is fully cooked. As once that's done, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and plate it. Do not forget to remove the toothpicks. That is a must. Because to finish up the sauce, I went ahead and added some fresh basil, mixed it really good, and on top of my steaks, they go. A generous amount. This is going to be delicious. But to make it even better, I went ahead and added some Parmigiano Reggiano right on top. And obviously a tiny bit of basil to keep it healthy. Because this is my take on Brasciola. I I can promise you one thing, it's going to be phenomenal and it is the perfect side dish to go along with steaks. Talking about that, do not forget what these steaks went through, especially the one that was inside of the potato for a long time. As now, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and cook them. So now I say, it is enough talking and it is time to grill, so let's do it. Alright everybody, and here we got our beautiful steak with a nice incredible side dish. Gentlemen, are you guys hungry? For once, the steaks and the side dish actually look good, Gugas. I don't know because this is a very interesting experiment. I've never done anything like this before. For you to not have done something already shocks me because you've done everything. <laughs> That's true. Now there's a lot more to study about this experiment and it is something that you should not try at home. It's one of these. Uh, it's well, one of these. I was happy. Now I'm scared. All right, very good. Enough. Let's give it a go, everybody. We're going to let you know how it tastes. Dig in right here. Let's go, 2K. We're going based off the smell. I don't smell anything weird. I feel like I might be okay with this one. All right, let's find out. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. One thing about Google, mm. you will always have a control. Huh? And this is a good one. Strong, beefy. You can feel that charcoal flavor. And it's juicy, too. I noticed you went back for another one. You hungry. Yep. You didn't have lunch? No, I waited for the video. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was good. That is our control. We're gonna dig into the steak. Let's go. First of all, smell it, and let me know if you smell anything weird. I don't know if it's, I actually smell something or I'm just freaked out about this steak. I, I don't think know. you're just freaked out. <laughs> I just smell beef and charcoal. We're gonna try it right now. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. 
Oh, it tastes a little bit funky. There's something there, and I'm not sure if I love it or if I just like it. It's not bad. No. no. Is it bad? No, but I do have one question. Why does it taste like kimchi? You know how kimchi has that little fermented taste? That, yeah. little, that little on the back of the tongue fermentation? I feel that. It has nothing to do with kimchi, but yes, it does taste a little fermented, which is might be a little concerning. Wait, what do you mean concerning? Don't worry about it. <laughs> is it better than the control? No. no. No? No. The control is better. Yeah. yeah. Mm. For sure. I have a feeling that this one is gonna be amplify the flavor because this one just has a little bit extra. That doesn't sound good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but before we try this next one, which looks very dangerous, let's go for this one that looks even more dangerous. Well, what are these words you're using today? Bad, ugly, dangerous. Exactly. Uh, don't worry, but you guys, you know, how about this? How does this look? Oh, no, that Pretty looks good. good. Ah, take one, my friend, take one. You know, I gotta be honest with you guys because I went to Italy and my good friend beat had me try something that I was not expecting to eat, but it was a bracciola made out of different type of meat and it was not a cow. Is this from a cow? It is from a cow. Oh. <laughs> Let's give it a go right now. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Is that cheese inside? Mm -hmm. There's so many things in there that is so flavorful and delicious, everybody. It's very juicy. And what I like the most is like that tomato flavor that you get in every bite. That tomato really coats everything very beautifully and amplifies the flavor of everything quite nicely. I like it a lot. I enjoy it quite a bit. This is delicious. Okay, what do you think? I want to know your opinion. I mean, picanha is always good. Can never go wrong, but the tomato does make it better. I know Angel probably he might be a fan, but tell, tell the people where he's at. I mean, Angel's in the Bahamas, and if we're being honest, he can stay there. <laughs> the tomato does make everything so much better. It adds a like a hint of freshness that doesn't kill the richness of the steak, but it balances it all out. So good. That is delicious. But let's go. It's time. Does it have to be time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah, eat yeah. that bad, ugly, concerning. No, Bro. don't do that. Don't do that. Enough talking, let's give it a go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Angel, come back. I don't want to do this anymore. What is that flavor? It's terrible. Oh. Yeah. Nope. No, oh, nope. Nope. I'm not quite sure how to describe that. Oh, you're going back for the brachiola? <laughs> I agree with you, Leo. That's not my, that might be a good thing. Google, how do we describe that to the audience? Dog no, no, damn, it's okay, no cursing. <laughs> Sorry. That is not very good, everybody, not whatsoever. Not for human consumption at all. I think the fermentation, like you said, went a little bit too much, and the steak is sour and fermented which is two things that you should not be eating whenever you're having a steak like that. Here's the thing, you know, sometimes our audience give us some interesting experiment, <laughs> and today is one of them. So they actually ask me to age a steak inside of a potato, put it in the ground, and then eat it. I love you guys. Sometimes keep things to yourself. <laughs> this one is not a good one, everybody. But thank you for your suggestion. Let us know in the comments down below what else we should give it a try, because that was fun, even though it was kind of weird. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.